All right, so I'm a big nerd about how movies are made, uh -huh. and this is in the trailer, so this is not a spoiler, but how do they do the scene where you're fighting yourself? Like, how do they shoot that? It is difficult. I had so much compassion for Lindsay Lohan doing Parent Trap and <laughs> having to face herself for an entire film. It's difficult because there's a lot of mathematics involved. So if we were doing this scene right now together and we had to replicate you, there's two of you, let's say. I'm going to pretend to be you on this side and do whatever, and then when it's time for you to come film on this side and we switch places so they can splice your two faces together, you have to watch every moment movement I did and replicate that in order to match the, the it, I mean, it's like geometry central. It's, it's How do you really touch your, like, your, your character, like she touches you. So it'd be like you and me doing a scene. Yeah. I just am your stunt. You, you find someone who's the same height as you oh and God. relatively same body figure and she touches you. And then you have to watch exactly where she touched me, exactly where and how her hand sat, and time it perfectly. And then I have to do it back to her. And then they splice them together. I have one more nerdy question about the scene when you're going through the glass and you tackle Kate Winslet. Yeah. How, is that is that all CGI? Are you actually how do they all do CGI. that? All CGI. It's not you at all. I mean, it's me. I it was me running with green screen, 360 degrees, top and bottom, and a little apple box that I had to jump over. And make a really funny face with like 200 people staring at me going, what is she doing? <laughs> Do you just freeze the face as you're jumping? Like, is that you're like, ah! No, it's slow motion. <laughs> that was awesome. It really was. Now talk about this is, This film is interesting because you've acted on a smaller budget with, with Ansel and also with uh, Miles. And I thought, talk about the difference in acting in a smaller budget environment on something like Fault or uh, Spectacular Now versus this on a massive budget environment. Is there any difference for you whatsoever in, with acting with them? Yeah, there's a big difference. I mean, well, I guess there's not a big difference in terms of the way that we interact with one another, but the scale of the film is just bigger. So there's more people around. Um, there's big cameras on cranes, and there's more cameras than on a small film. Uh, on a small film, you generally know everyone's name on the crew within the first five days. On a big film like this, it takes weeks to, to remember who everybody is because there's so many people doing so many amazing different things. Yeah, by the way, uh, Miles just told me like Andrew from Whiplash and Triss are essentially the same person because they're both divergent. I want to see that movie go down together. Like divergent meets Whiplash. Like he has to drum drum me out of a fight scene or something. Yes! And get JK in there. He's like he's like wrapping you up saying you're rushing your dragon. Oh uh, yeah, that, that would not fly with me. <laughs> if JK Simmons decided to yell at me the way he yelled at Miles, Triss would not be dumb. Yeah, what would Triss do? She would put him in his place. All right, uh, this <laughs> This needs to happen immediately. Someone get Damien on the phone. We have to do this. Hey, it was awesome to see you. But the scene when you jump across the train track as the train's coming, how do they do that? What, what does it look like on set for you? I mean, I'm sure that's not really there, but how do they do it? Yeah, it's funny that because in a way I was like, can, not, can someone not like, can I get pulley so I look like a superhero so I can be like, ah! But they were like, no, just jump. Just, <laughs> so just, just run jump. really fast and jump. But they had, they had a portion of track set up, obviously no train. Um, and then we shot it in a way where kind of my, I'm approaching, I look, there, there's timing issues. You know, it, it's all about really the way they were timed and then they shot another one where obviously I leap and I had to do that, you know, as many times and as high as I could. But. Is the leap, are you jumping off of like a spring? How do, how do they get you to get that high? Is it just naturally you're jumping? That's just me. Yeah. Dude, see, look at that. You just get an Oscar just for, like, just for the air you got. Yeah. <laughs> Best jump. Um, <laughs> like the MTV award or something yeah, exactly. like that. You know, um, we, we meet Ford a certain part, obviously, in his life when the, when the diversion starts, but obviously books and scripts only lend a certain amount to who a character is. Mm. Obviously, you have the tattoos and everything, but what is something that you personally have added into four that was not part of the book or the script that kind of like got you into the mindset of the character? Mm, I think, um, well, first of all, I had to approach it. He's not, you know, in the book, he's not my age. I'm significantly older than he is in the book. Mm. And that actually worked for me, obviously. But I wanted him to have more experience because the whole point is he's, he's kind of different to these, these other people in a way. He's been around the block a bit. So the idea that he's actually been kicking around and, and kind of making mistakes for six or seven years beforehand. Um, and then I kind of, what I, what I liked about him is his quietness and I kind of tried to add that in. So in a way, sometimes when you look at a script, it was a decision to actually strip some of the dialogue out and, and kind of say sometimes as little as possible. And now the action sequences are unbelievable when you have like obviously the guns and everything like that and you're shooting an action scene. Do, are any of the guns actually shooting like, like blanks? Is like, do yeah. you actually hear them going off? How does that work in a movie? They're all pretty much quarter or half loads, so the mm. shell is, you know, pretty much empty. But it, it means that it, it 
uh, releases a shell, so it looks like you're firing. Um, and there's a little bit of recoil on them. Um, so yeah, they kind of, uh, and w w we found actually with this that you needed the, the bigger loads because otherwise it just wouldn't read. And, 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 and also, you need a, a heavier, you need a bigger load in the round right. for the, the recoil to actually keep the gun shooting, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean, otherwise it gets jammed. Right. So um, no, usually it's good. The, the difference is outside is fine, but sometimes if you're shooting inside and, and you've got a lot of things around you, there's a lot of debris that gets kicked out, so sometimes you're like, ah, <laughs> you don't want to do that in the movie because you want to look cool when exactly, you're shooting. Yeah, like, ah, God, God. <laughs> One of the things about these movies is that they're so popular in the sense of like the fans are insane. Like they'll camp out for the movies, they'll wait in line for hours and days. I'm just wondering, what is the craziest fan encounter you've had so far? Like anybody in particular, like get the tattoos? Have you met anybody who's like gone like overboard with their fan reactions? Um. <laughs> A few, a few, yeah. Um, my, I, I remember I was in a, a bar with my brothers and someone had managed and I'd gone out, I'd gone away for an hour or something, I was meeting them later, I can't remember exactly, but she had managed to convince them that somehow she was like, my manager's friend or someone like that. So my brother were like, dude, um, there's this girl here and is she, I mean, she seems okay, but it's kind of strange. Do you, I mean, is she, and, I, and then it took me a while because you know when you don't know people, you're like, oh shit, my, I'm sure it's probably my, me. Yeah, I met her before. Exactly, and you don't want to kind of, you know, <laughs> insult someone. And then we figured out halfway through, we were having a drink, we're like, we do not know this fucking oh, person. What do you do? How do you get her to go away? My Thank brother slept with it. Him. <laughs> 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 no, no, that is awesome. Line of the day. I'm done. That's all I need. Hey, man, it's good yeah, to man. see you, buddy. See you, man. Congratulations. I love the idea of the five different factions and the different personality traits that go within them. And This might yeah. be a dumb hypothetical question just from a movie nerd, but sure. if you could put Andrew and Fletcher from Whiplash into some of the factions, where would they fit in? I mean, I think they're both, you know, they're both <laughs> dauntless. Andrew's maybe a, diver er, a divergent yeah. because he <laughs> Can, you know, he starts out as like Amity, more selfless, this and that, and then he really kind of, he, I don't think he knew that he had this Dauntless inside him. I mean, he he gets pushed to this point that you think he's gonna break, but he never does. Similar to Tris, honestly, yeah. I never made that comparison. But yeah. that's good. Andrew Neiman and, and Tris Pryor are very similar. Whiplash too. Get Damien on the phone right, right. now. <laughs> he's the, he's the first person on my speed dial. <laughs> let's let's yeah, call him right now. Make every movie with I think you do wonderful work when it, you, whether it's a big budget or a small budget film, like spectacular now. Obviously, films like this, Fantastic Four, which I'm excited to see. Yeah. Can you talk about the difference in approaching a character in a low budget environment like Spectacular Now versus yeah. a higher budget like this, or even Whiplash with low yeah. budgets? Yeah, I mean, I think the way you approach it is always the same way because when you first get a script, you're just trying to understand who this character is. And at the end of the day, you know, it's my job. Anytime I'm saying a line, if I'm talking about somebody in the line, I need to know who that person is. Mm. And you just have to make it real for you for anybody else to believe it. And then from there, the only difference is that once you're on set, I mean, Whiplash, you're shooting, you know, four or five scenes a day. You only have 19 days to shoot the whole movie. Yeah. Whereas something like this, you have a little more time. And what do you do with that time? If I have you know, six hours in between scenes, it's still my job when they say action to be to be present, be in that moment. So I think you just get, the more movies you do, the more comfortable you are kind of with your own process and you know what you need. But, you know, and on this one, you know, there's a little more green screen, Fantastic Four is a little more green screen. Yeah. But, and that's tough, man, because you're not acting with a person, you're acting with, you know, this image or, you know, this idea of something without actually having to see it, so. Yeah. But you're all just, I mean, at the end, you're just trying to make reality. You're just trying to create, you know, a real, a real world for yourself. Yeah, now, you know, interestingly enough, in this movie, your character has a pretty gigantic arc in the sense of you're going going back and forth between different elements of how you feel about certain things. I don't yeah, want to yeah. give anything away there, but when you, movies are shot non-linearly, so you're shooting right. out of order, so will you go on set one day, shoot, a uh, half of your arc and then go in the morning and do the other half and how do you do uh, that? Yeah, that happens all the time. It's I insane. Mean, for Spectacular Now, Shailene and I shot the last scene of the movie on the second day. What? So you're supposed to look at this girl having gone through this whole relationship and have that look, you know, what would we, when I see you now, what does that look like? Yeah. But on this movie, I mean, I was shooting Fantastic Four at the same time, so I shoot Fantastic Four, I come over, do two weeks on Insurgent, go back, and you're moving back and forth. So it is hard, but that's when a director is really important because the director sees the entire movie. And as an actor, you are, but like you say, you're always shooting out of, out of sequence and things that you're doing now maybe don't track as well from what you did earlier. Right. So you really need to, hopefully you have people that you're working with that you can lean on to, to try and um, you know, make it as specific as possible. I know there's no definitive answer to this question, but since I've seen Whiplash five times, now I have to ask you this. I know yeah. Damien probably has no exact answer to it, but yeah. once this, the movie goes to black, yeah. what do you personally think happens to him? I think Andrew, I, I think now that he's had a taste of it, I think that he, 
is not stopping. I mean, he just played the greatest drum solo of his life. <laughs> There's a lot of people in the audience that can do some things for him. So I think he lives a pretty lonely existence, uh, becoming, you know, just working on his craft and becoming one of the greatest drummers of all time, but but being pretty, uh, you know, probably pretty pretty miserable and alone. Yeah, yeah. When people say you're gonna die alone, that's, I mean, yeah. That's Andrew. Yeah. You know, one thing I do when I walk out of a movie, I always, I take away certain messages and there are certain movies that actually affect the way I live my life, the way characters go through. So I'm wondering, as you leave a character like Gus or a character like Caleb, are there aspects of those characters still within your life now as you sit here? Do you take on some of the characteristics? Um, I think, I think that it's the other way around. I think that huh. those characters get something from me. Interesting. So I like look into myself for what you know? What parts of me would work in this character, and how can I build this character off myself? Because it is me at the end of the day. Yeah. But it's just a selective version of me, and like I, I sort of visualize everything that makes me, and I pick out the parts that will make that character. So if I'm watching Caleb on camera, who am I? What what aspects of him am I seeing of you from real life? Well, I mean, you know, you, I relate to him in a way that, uh, with Caleb, I think that he's really just someone who, is, I, you know, in my life I've been confused before, and I've. But I still, you know, I, I, I thought that I knew what I wanted, and I'm gonna follow that, and I'm gonna do my best to, uh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best to, to, to follow like what I think is right. But at the same time, maybe I'm not sure if what I think is right is right. Mm. If that makes any sense. So with Caleb, he is trying to do what's best for the world, but at the same time, he's not quite sure because he has to give in his sister, and, you know, he's trusting Janine, but. Can he trust her? Should he trust her? It's a whole struggle. And then he just suppresses everything. And he's like a robot and he's like a machine. And I, I think I've been there in life before where mm. there's been hard decisions or, if, you know, uh, you know, maybe a fight with a friend or a girlfriend or something like that. And, and you don't know what to do and you're, you're emotionally struggling. And it's just those moments, you remember what that's like to feel that. And you sort of apply and then you start to use your imagination. And that's how you build those moments. Because I've been there before. I've mm. been in a moment where... I was cold to people because I wasn't sure if I was right or wrong. And it's that confusion that builds Caleb, I think, a lot in the end of the movie. Correct me if I'm wrong about this, but as I, I'm looking at this character, I'm looking at someone like your character in Fault in Our Stars, and at the beginning of that movie, he's very confident, and as the movie goes on, we learn about his vulnerabilities, and he kind of becomes very open to us as an yeah. audience. In this movie, you open up very vulnerable, and then you become not confident, but more uh, cold, as you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're kind of working backwards in the roles. Can you exactly. talk about like that in a movie, making a movie like that, and starting off confident to vulnerable, then vulnerable to confident, kind of? Yeah, I... Um I think it's just about taking it scene for scene, realizing where they are. At, that, at the moment, Gus has beaten cancer. When he starts, he's beaten cancer, and he's really, he's just trying to take this girl home and make out with her in his basement. Yeah. It's simple. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not like he's trying to become, you know, the romantic man of your dreams yet. Uh, he's just trying to make out with this girl. And in the beginning of the film, like, let's not forget about that. And then as time goes on, he, his, he develops feelings for this girl, and he likes, starts to like the girl, and that's where it starts. If you start him as the perfect guy who's already in love, it, there's nowhere mm. to go, and it doesn't make any sense, mm. you know? Um, the funny thing is if I told, you know, if I told some of the fans that, they'd be like, what are you talking about? Gus is always perfect. <sighs> but he's not, and I think that's what people actually love about Gus, is that he's not always perfect. And, you know, with Caleb, it's the same thing. It's, you know, you start somewhere, and then you, you have somewhere to go. If you already start in a place one place and you're playing the same thing the whole movie, it's boring and there's, mm. there's nothing to it. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. They're wrapping me up. It's right. always good to see you, man. Thank you. Good to see you. Now, after you shoot a movie, obviously with a movie like this, there's a lot of green screen, there's a lot of action going on, it's a shot out of order. Can you sit in a theater and actually emotionally engage in a movie? Are you self-critical about watching yourself on camera? I know a lot of actors can't watch their own movies, but can you actually physically like, engage in a movie like this after you film it? Well, um, I, I'm a it's a little bit of both for me. Mm. Um, I'm, you know, a small part of, of this movie, uh, and it, it makes it that much more exciting to um, sit in the theater and watch it. I love action films, yeah. and it's not often that we get female heroines, and it's not often that we get the strong women that we have uh, uh, heading up the roles that we have. So 
everything about this movie uh, checks off a lot of boxes for me. Right. This is a ran totally random question off topic, but I have to know, at the Oscars, did you, was that prepared? Was that, did prepared. You, did you know that he was going to be calling you out like that, Neil Patrick Harris? No, but you know, most people who know me know that I, I, I don't take myself too seriously. <laughs> so I, I had a ball, and I, I feel terrible that he is catching so much flack for that. Yeah, but it, it was like the, the whole bit with the briefcase, you had no idea going into the night that that was going to no, happen. I, I, why would I? Yeah, <laughs> I was just curious. You know, when I sit in a theater and I see an action scene, like when Tris is bursting out through that uh, window, it's all exploding, and she tackles Kate Winslet. Like, I get these things called nerd tears. I get so <laughs> I get so geeked out about it. What nerds you out in your real life? What do you get geeked out about besides movies? Is there anything in real life you get nerd about? Uh, what do I nerd out about? I nerd out about uh, anything dealing with forensics. Oh. Really? Yeah. Well, what about? Can I ask why? What, what, what about forensics? Well, I, I'm I'm a huge. Uh, mystery buff and and uh, so that all kind of you know melds together for me that's amazing you yeah. nerd out about forensics love I've never forensics. heard that one before love it Octavia you always surprise me and you're a wonderful that's actress. what we're supposed to do as women good to see you you're good to see you